Welcome to Keto Beyond the Couch, episode 226. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy ketos. ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome. If you're new here, say hi down below. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and every Monday we go live on Keto Beyond the Couch because life exists beyond the couch. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is 2 and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon in that way. Every single time, I'm not sure that we're speaking out of the right right mic, you'll be alerted to it. Are we what, in the right mic? Why would you say is that? Is it? Is it? Everybody can hear us? I, yeah, it should okay. be. Okay. All right. Good. Yay. <laughs> Yay. I love it. I love Monday mornings. So welcome to Keto Beyond the Couch. If you are new here, Keto Beyond the Couch is all about subscribers. We like to celebrate wins. We like uh, to answer questions and comments from the last week that we found on uh, last week's Keto Beyond the Couch or also on our Facebook and our Mighty Networks group. Um, people ask us all the time, hey, how can I support you guys? And that would be go over to our Mighty Networks group and join our network over there. But you can also join for free. Absolutely. I want to give a big shout out to Stephanie. I see Stephanie is brand new here. Welcome, Stephanie. We're so excited that you're here and so excited for all of the new subscribers. If you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, do us a favor. Hit that subscribe button. It yeah. really does bless us. If you're looking to be like, I want to bless somebody today. What's the easiest way I could do that. Hit the subscribe button for Do you know that ketos. 68% of the views on our channel are come from people who are not subscribed watching, to our channel? That means a lot of you who are watching right now are not even subscribed. <gasps> I can't believe it. I cannot believe that, Joe. I know. They're right? going to fix it today. They're, They're going to subscribe. Thank you. So welcome to Kia Beyond the Couch. We're going to start off with, I, I can't type. Yes. Joe had a little bit of a snafu that happened yesterday. I lost my battle for the first time ever. I lost my battle with a lionfish. The lionfish bit you instead yeah. of you biting the lionfish. Yeah. The, the worst part about this is it did not happen when I was fishing. No. No. It happened on the boat. Which is weird. I came up on the boat. I have this special container to protect myself. I wear gloves. I'm careful at home. I hand my container to the person when I'm coming up on the boat. And I did not realize it's my own fault. It's not his fault. I did not realize that he put the container upside down. Ooh. on the deck of the boat. And one little hair and was so sticking out. There's an opening that where you put them in but they can't come out, but I didn't I was just I was trying to get ready for the next dive. I hadn't put my gloves on. I flipped it over and there was one spine sticking out. It was just enough. And it hit me. One thing. If I could have cut my finger off about three hours later, I would have. Because the pain. The pain. And now how big was this fish that did that to you? Like this big? No, he was about this big. Wow. Yeah, I mean, he was a decent size, but it was just one. And I got it, and I was about to get in the water, and I just, I said, I'm going in. I put a little bit of ointment on it. Um, but the way you treat it is with heat, but I'm on a boat, so I'm not going to ask anybody to go back. So I just dealt with it. And then I was driving home, and I started going, oh, my gosh, my ring. Yeah. And so I worked really hard to get my ring off because my finger was swelling up. And so, yeah, there's no way I can get it on. Now it's it's the swelling. They say the swelling will last about a week. My gracious. But the, the pain has gone away. But, yeah, that was yesterday was, a, was not a fun it day. It was a solid, like, 12 hours. Uh, pain lasted for about five or six hours, the pain shooting in the finger. Just, like, putting it in. And then you're trying to put it in hot water because that's how you deal with it. But that, now it's the swelling. And wow. so it's it's swollen to about here. I had this hand stuffed in water all day yesterday. And the rest of my fingers were wrinkling up. And this one would not. You can see it's still pretty swollen. Shout out for cutest couple this morning goes to Sarah Joy and Matthew Franklin. Who I see in the chat saying good morning to each other. And yep. like being just like super sweet. I love that. Like just seeing their cute love story. They recently celebrated their anniversary. They're just the cutest couple. And I just have to shout you guys out because you're adorable. Adorable in the chat this morning. 
Uh, Carrie said, I can hear you all the way to Texas. Yay, I'm so glad. And thank you for your prayers, Carrie. I know that you've been praying for us to like have a like problem-free live stream this morning. Stephanie's here. Said, love your content. I'm new to keto and you are helping me tremendously. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. And thank you for everybody that has brought such a warm welcome to all of the new people who have joined us in Mighty Networks and in our Facebook family group. We appreciate that so much because just like it, it's about community. So it's not just me and Joe. It's everybody else that helps to make new people feel welcome. Yeah. Okay, so let's jump right into Keto Beyond the Couch. If you are new here, the way we do this, we go through everything. Uh, we don't pay too much attention to the chat. Good morning, Lindsay. And then we're going to address the chat like the last 10 to 15 minutes of the stream. So right around 11 o'clock or so. Uh, if you have something you want to talk about right away, dun, 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 um, then what you do is use the super chat function down below. That is the dollar sign that is in the chat window. It really does help benefit the channel. It helps us to go to conferences things like that. I'll continue to run the channel. This is our full-time job, trying to change the world one ribeye at a time. Let's so do it. If you do that, we greatly appreciate it. We're going to start off with our Keto College Adjunct Professor of the Week. It is Amanda. Hi, Amanda. Amanda put this little you versus you, you versus you, a battle worth fighting. Yes. Today at the gym, I happen to be doing an exercise that had me facing the board where the day's workouts were listed. Looking at it, and I shrugged it off. Am I the strongest woman at the gym? No. Am I the fastest woman at the gym? No. Am I the way and athletic skilled woman among the women at the gym? No. Am I a little better today than I was yesterday? Ooh. Yes. The comparison game is useless. The only battle worth fighting is the battle to be better today than I was yesterday. This is another part of my study of one. Amanda, this is it. Like, you get it. Like, this is such a, a, a moment of victory when you have that, like, realization that you're not comparing yourself to anybody else. You've got to compare yourself to yourself yeah. and attempt to get... 1% better all the time. Just 1% better. That is manageable. I'm so proud of you. I love the fact that you were like, mm, I got this. Because a lot of times when you see a workout of a day or even like the tasks that you have to do in a day, your own things to do list can really make you just want to like go back to bed and put the covers back over your head. Yep. But the fact that you're like, you know what? I can do this. I got this. Move forward. I even remember when I used to do CrossFit, I would look up the wad, the workout of the day, before I would go there. And if I would see like pull ups, I wouldn't go. Yeah. Because I can't do pull ups. And I would compare myself. I'd be like, I am not going to be that person that can't do pull ups. And I don't want to look like an idiot in front of everybody. So I just wouldn't go. Just wouldn't go. Wow. Wow. So don't do that. Don't do that. Move forward. Uh, first subscriber of the week is Sarah. There's Sarah. Sarah said, I had a big realization this morning. I'm half the size I was a year ago. Wow. I started my keto journey at 280 pounds, but my highest recorded weight was 295. I weighed 210 this morning, which means I've lost 70 pounds in one year and a total of 85 pounds. I want to lose another 65 pounds. However, keto has not been about weight loss for me, but about health instead. So good. Weight loss is the cherry on the top. Gone is my type 2 diabetes. Yes. Gone are the sugar and the junk food cravings. Yeah. Gone is half my excess body weight. Gone are the lots of medications. Gained is metabolic health. Gained is the ability to be active and move around. Gained is confidence. And gained is loving myself. I love that. Look at this gorgeous woman. I love this. And there's the couple together. I love that. I love that Matthew's in that one picture too. Yes, confidence. When I see that hand on the hip pose, I know we're headed in the right direction and it has nothing to do with weight. And it has know, to do with confidence. The other day, Sarah actually put up in, I think it was in Mighty Networks, a picture of she, you know how we recreated our Mickey picture? Yes. She recreated oh, yes. a picture of herself in front of the Magic Kingdom. With, with her husband and it was so stinking cute. Yes. That's not like, like, look like the same people. This is the victory. This is the victory. I love that so much. Okay, next one we have is from Stacy. Hi, Stacy. Stacy said, non-scale victory. I had to laugh at myself when I realized I no longer have to rock up on my butt <gasps> yes! to get the car door to close tightly. Okay, yes. You know what I'm talking about. Yep. I hadn't even thought about this until I read this So post. freaking true. It's been a while, I guess, but it just hit me that there is room between my leg and the door. 
Celebrate the victory. Stacy. I love this so hard. I can't even tell you. You are so right. This is something that I have not had eyes on before this post, but you are absolutely right. Like there was so much like even trying to and get together yeah. and, and fit in between not just the door, but also have space between like the center console. And then have room because, like, my seatbelt buckle would be back here. Right. So it's like I really didn't fit to the door. I really didn't fit to the the rest in the middle. And I really had a hard time being able to, like, move things around to buckle my seatbelt. All of this is victory. You know when so I, I felt like I was winning? Yeah. When we got on a plane and I didn't have to jam my butt in between the two Yes. Armrests. And then you lift up the armrest. We would lift, have to lift up the armrest so that we could kind of fit. And then, of course, the flight attendant went, the armrest has to be down during takeoff and, yeah. and landing. And I'm like, so stressful. do you understand how much this is going to be, how painful this is going to be? So when we didn't yeah. have to do that, I was like, I'm winning. And there's a lot of times that we drove places because we could not afford Afford a second to buy a second plane yeah. um, seat, even though we needed one. And I can remember I would be in a full blown anxiety panic attack as I thought if I was in the middle seat, there's going to be somebody that comes that's going to need to sit next to me. And I'm in their seat. Yeah. Like part of me is in their seat. And, and it was just such a nervous thing. And it's like travel all together is very different now. I'm so thankful for it. Yep. Uh, let's take a quick fade to back and come back with some comments. Boo, peekaboo, I see you. I found a new flavor of Celsius. How is it? I have not tried that yet. I know. Well, I left it in the refrigerator for a day. I wanted you to didn't cool take it. it. No, it's been there for. Is this supposed hours. to be a fruit punch? It, yes, it is. It's cosmic. Yeah. Of course, I said like, is it? Is the flavor out of this world? See what I did there. I didn't say you can have some. That tastes a lot like I hope strawberry. Like I like it. It's not bad. I'll probably never find it again. But, but. fruit punch? I don't know. It's, I like Celsius. I guess most fruit punch leads with a fruit of some sort. I and I feel like it's leading with strawberry. Us. It's good. It's delicious. Yeah. It's tasty. It's, I like it. That's really good. Okay. Um, first comment we have is from Nellie Needs Me. I love this. Hi, Nellie. She's like, E. E. I was the adjunct professor last week. Thank you. Ah. I think the people who are leaving negative comments need to start up a YouTube channel to show us all what perfection looks like. Wow. I like that. Oh my gosh. Thank you. First of all, congratulations on being the adjunct professor. Thank you for sharing a thought that we can all be encouraged by. And, and that is what I choose to have eyes on. Who is lifting my spirits? Who is saying something that I want? to be branded on my heart. Like I have to look at that. You have to let the negativity go. And I mean, everyone experiences negativity somewhere in their life. Like right. it's going on, right? It's at their job. It's like with, even with friends, maybe, you know, we're going to be doing like um, barbecue summertime. Maybe you're going to get together with some family that like, man, that one person I don't want to see because it, they're always negative. I choose to focus on who I'm looking forward to seeing. Yeah. Who is going to say something positive? Yeah. It's funny because I, mean, I agree. If you want to leave negative comments and think we're wrong about things, just go start it's a YouTube okay. channel. Well, I would And tell everybody how you're right and everybody else is wrong. Yesterday, I, I responded to someone's comment on an old video. Um, Dr. Barry with beef butter bacon egg, we were talking about insulin and they said insulin has one purpose and that is to lower glucose and to help you store fat for the winter. That's what, and so I responded, I'm like, you're partially correct, but insulin has a big role. We need insulin. You need it every day. If you don't have insulin, you're a type one diabetic. Um, and then you have to inject insulin and it's a growth hormone and it's responsible for building muscle and repairing muscle. A lot of functions. Yeah. And they responded back to me with, um, I guess you know more than this so-and-so doctor and that I have some disease that I have to be right. Okay. I'm like, well, if you think that this is it, then go start a YouTube channel, <laughs> you know, but don't, don't be negative in our comments because we're going to delete it. Well, I think that I do believe in stress reduction. I think that that's super important. Yeah. Okay? How you reduce stress? Don't read the comment section of your right. YouTube channel. Well, no, I think that honestly, if we're somebody that aggravates somebody, 
don't watch us. Yeah. Like, don't watch us. Like, don't do that to yourself. Yeah. Like, if we aggravate you're just going to get you, aggravated with us. You're just going to get aggravated. I don't want to raise your co- cortisol by, like, not being so your nice. cup of tea. Yeah. I, I honestly, honestly, I just don't want them to be aggravated. Save yourself. Uh, Marie Skidmore, thank you very much for the $1.99 Thanks, super chat and said, love Celsius Cola. Me too. I'm the only one in the house that likes Celsius Cola. Does John Paul like no. Celsius Cola? No. Nobody else. They all think it's gross. It's you wannabe like cola. It. But I like it. He really likes it. I like it. Are you glad that you have somebody that likes Ex- what you like? Yes. Except for Anthony when we were, where were we? were on the cruise. Did he drink your lemon lime today? I don't know. It's gone. It's we, man- we were on vanished. the cruise and Michelle sends me a thing that Sprouts had it. At buy one get one free. So I message Anthony. I'm like, hey, take my credit card, go buy me like 60 Celsius because they're buy one get one free. And then they were 20% off too. So right. It came out to be like a dollar fifteen a can or something like that. He, and I'm like, he's like, what flavor? I'm like, I don't know. Be creative. You know, these are the flavors I like. If you see a new flavor, you should not ask him to be creative with something like, if you that see you a like. New flavor, I'm like, I don't want things like Aussie Berry. I, I don't even understand that one. He comes home. He does bring home one new flavor, which is really good. Grapefruit. I really like that one. What does he come home with? Non-sparkling, which Rachel tried to sparkle it. And it, it don't work. work. Um, but, and I say, Barry, he's like, well, I like those flavors. I'm like, really? Like... <laughs> Yeah, well, and it's one of those things when you're expecting a seltzer and you get flat drink, you're like, oh my goodness. Like, it's it's so weird. It really plays tricks on you. And I'm going to apologize right away. I am burping up like nobody's business right now because I am drinking seltzer water and I really wanted it super seltzery. So I like stuck it under the soda stream like several times to like really bubble it up. But now I'm a burping fiend. So like that was not a, that was not a good move. That, I'm, I feel like that that needs to go in our like. That's not it, Rachel. That's not it. That's not it. Okay, next one is from Amy's Life Journey. Hey, Said Amy. your approach to labeling ourselves on keto lifestyle is much appreciated. Oh wow, thank you. Yeah, but please don't label yourself. Yeah, I, something negative. If you want to say like I'm doing awesome keto, I'm doing excellent keto, I'm doing sustainable keto. Like I love those names. Like you could come up with your own. I mean, last week we came up with the ice cream diet, right? Like yeah. so you can come up with whatever you want to call it, right? I'm doing bacon keto. I like the I like the sound of that. I can smell that. Can you smell it? Bacon keto. Like just the word, I can that's, smell it. That's interesting. That's Cher a said step. giving that advice to friends who are in desperate need of help can be hazardous. <laughs> yes it is. Yeah. Yes it is. You got to like you got to Go plant that seed. And sometimes you have to just trust that it will get watered without you. The sunshine, all of the things that need to make that seed, like, grow, it may not be you yeah. that grows it. That's right. Uh, next one's from Deborah. Hey, Deborah. I just came across your videos. Watch the one three years ago on how you started keto. Very expi- inspiring. I too have dabbled in it along with carnivore. I watch Kenberry and Maria. I am by myself on this and I am so very confused trying to do this right. I get frustrated. I do have high blood pressure, overweight at 163 pounds, five foot three, size 10. I really don't know what or how. I watch videos to try to figure it out. I don't have Facebook, got hacked too many times. Anyway, I really enjoy your videos. Thank you. Thanks, Deborah. Okay, Deborah. So a couple of things. First thing I want you to do is I want you to pick a type of keto that is sustainable for you. Yes. And do that instead of going back and forth and back and forth and going, hey, I did carnivore for a week. It didn't work. I'm going to do keto for a week. It didn't work. I'm going to do protein sparing modified fast. It didn't work. I want you to pick one thing and do it for a minimum of 60 to 90 days and do it well, do it strictly. Now, when it comes to like, if you're having struggles, what I would tell you to do is for a minimum of 60 to 90 days, do nothing but beef, butter, bacon, and egg to clear out any possibilities of like things that are causing inflammation on you. So do that. And then do keto. That's where I would personally start to just get rid of any like cravings for sugar because you can't have any. Body confusion. Yeah. All of that stuff. And then just do that well. 
The thing about beef, butter, bacon, egg is you are not going to be over, be able to overeat beef. You're that just, helps. your body is going to, when, I mean, Neely has talked about lately, when you're doing like a one food ingredient kind of thing, by day two, you're like, yeah, I ain't going to do that. I don't want to do it. I just, one of the reasons that it becomes, you know, easy to, easier to lose weight on that is because you're like, Okay, if that's all I can have, I just don't want to eat today. Right. Right? It's like if you came to me and said, the only thing you can have sardines, it's going to be a long time before I actually eat those sardines. You're going to have to be legit hungry. If that's all I can have, I'll just choose not to eat today. Right. So that's one. But you're not going to be able to overeat beef because of the protein. You don't think you'll snack them? It's going to fill you up. No snacking sardines? Well, if you do, no. (laughs) If you do beef, butter, bacon, and egg right, you're going to have some success because you're going to eat as much as you want. As many times as a day as you want, so long as every time you eat, you eat until you're full. You're stuffed. You're not going to be able to eat more than two or three days if you do it correctly. You don't have to calorie count. And the problem is, is a lot of us, when we come on to keto, we bring our old diet mentality with us. Right. And that is, I need to count calories. Well, counting calories doesn't work. Counting macros sort of works, but you got to get enough protein. But people who count calories think protein calories count. And they don't. They're a completely different type of fuel. You have to look at what is your body looking for fuel. So 100 calories of beef is not the same as 100 calories of sugar. If it was, then I would eat 2,000 calories a day of Oreo cookies. I got news to you. If I ate 2,000 calories a day of Oreo cookies. It's going to have a much different effect. I'm going to be back to my old weight very, very quickly. So just focus on eating a bunch of good meat and eggs, and you should have some success. I think sometimes people, when they hear you say, like, eat until, like, you're full, like, you're stuffed. The first week you should be eating until you can't get another thing in. That, but that sounds really weird. That sounds odd. But I want you to think about how you used to snack and graze all day long. If you were to take all of the grazing that tied you over across like the 18 hours of waking time that you have in a day, you would be stuffed. Like you would have a lot of of things, right? Like we can eat a lot over the course of the day. We're just asking you to say, put it into its place, put it into at mealtime, because we truly do want to break that habit of just grazing all day long. Like it is, it is not a good use of our time. It is not a good use of our energy. It is taxing our body. Like there's, there's no need for the grazing, but we do in order to enjoy fullness and satiation, we do need to actually get full when we eat. Yeah. That's why we say it. And also, as far as Facebook, I hate Facebook. Okay. We leave our Facebook group open I'm because people have asked us to. about how you feel, Joe. Um, I hate Facebook. I know. I the don't only, know. It's only there because we have a bunch of people who like to use it. But that's about the only thing I do at Facebook is look there, look in, I look in the Keto Child group, and I look in Kim Howerton's group. That's pretty much what I do. Like I, because I get so many ads, um, that's why we have mighty network. So if you don't have Facebook, that's fine. Go join our mighty network. It's completely free members. Two crazy ketos.com. You can sign up. You don't have to do one of the pay things. The only difference between the pay thing and the regular one is, is that it's people who want to support us financially on our mission. Right. And then we give them a couple of live streams a month when we can. And, and we're working on some other cool stuff. Um, but that's the free one. You're gonna you can have posts, you can answer questions, there's instant messaging, everything. Chat. Members.twocrazyketos.com. JJ, thank you very much Thanks, for JJ. the five four ninety nine super chat. Said loving my summers out of school Aww. so I can catch all the lives. Rachel, you started something with that bacon <laughs> keto chat. It is so good. I love it. That was my favorite part. Um, of the week, honestly, was like sharing that mix in. I don't know if I blessed anybody else, but man, I think a lot. We enjoyed it again. Like now is last that night adding keto chuck to the egg loop. I see a lot of people doing that. I'm so glad yeah. that was something that we really enjoyed, also. But I'm gonna tell you, if you have not tried that yet, and you enjoy your ice cream like a ninja creamy ice cream using keto chow for the mix in. Add bacon, crispy bacon, no snotty bacon. I mean, we never, this is a snotty bacon free zone. 
But like we did crispy it last bacon. night with bacon crumbles, it, it doesn't wasn't work. as good. It doesn't work. It wasn't it's as not crunchy. good. I know, baby. But we were doing our best, and I it's know. what we had. We just need to make up a bunch of bacon crumbles. It's what we had in that moment. It is. So I'm thankful for what we. I'm had. just telling people, don't try it with bacon crumbles. Make up your own. It's like because the, the one the store bought ones are snotty. It's like when you make your um carnivore chicken nuggets, and you and it's like the difference between canned chicken and using real raw chicken, raw chicken. Yeah. it's it's like so very very different sarah said i had my first experience with a troll yesterday on dr Boz's oh. video i chose not to even argue that's the best thing to do i love that that, that has become our new thing is you and win for the most part i'm not going to argue with you on our no. comment section you're going to put up your thing i probably won't even heart it but if it is something that i think is just wrong and may confuse other people i will answer it and then when you get nasty i delete you yeah um but dr boz's little short yesterday <gasps> go watch it wow her. wow I that's loved a stance she, it was a stance it's a stance so, i mean you have to I'm not sometimes gonna say what it is. go watch her short that she put up yesterday I it was name. i was very very just excited to see it proud to be her friend yeah. You know how sometimes you see somebody post something and you're just like, I am proud to be your friend right now. Yeah. When I saw that short, I was like, young lady, I am so proud to be your friend. Uh, next one we have is from Sue Lane. Hey, Sue Lane. Hey, Rachel. This is Sue Lane. Hi, Sue Lane. This is Rachel. You just are looking so wonderful. And I wanted to know what you have been doing. You've, lo you've lost so much. You look so fantastic. You're over doing so well with our keto and restaurant because I just can't seem to get things together the way I should. And I'd like to know any suggestions from you. I appreciate it. Well, thank you so much for your kind words and your compliments. I really appreciate that. Um, it has been a very much hard fought battle um, for stress reduction that I know exactly how much stress and lack of sleep and um, worrying, worrying and doubt about yourself and, and, and your purpose in life, all of these things, it weighs 30 pounds that, that in my experience, it weighs exactly 30 pounds. So if you're like, man, I'm down to my last 30 pounds and I can't seem to make it budge. I believe you should do a friend in Tory, which is like, who needs to be in your circle of influence? Who needs to be speaking into your life? Who who needs to, to have a say when you're making decisions? I think that you need to get eyes on your sleep. That makes it a huge deal for me as far as like rebooting me through the night and then helping me be successful the following day. And I think that you need to take a look at your stress and don't just say like, I have the statement everybody I, I hear says when I say, Hey, you need to work on your stress. Well, I can't, there's nothing I can do about this in this area. There's no room for any forward momentum. I've done all that I can. Miracles happen every day. If you will try to get 1% better in stress reduction, I'm not saying that you like sweep the leg and like Cobra Kai all of your stress. But if you say, I chose to, to get 1% better in my stress, you will see major results. I mean, we have had people recently talk about how they retired and that like they immediately had to start getting de-prescribed on medication. Right. What does that tell me? Because they were eating keto before they retired. They're just retiring and enjoying their life. And a lot of the stress relate, related to their workplace is now just gone. And what did that do? They were able to get off medicine. It's a major factor. And there's all kinds of inflammation and weight re you know, retention and then also emotional eating right. that goes with stress. It's worth getting our eyes on. Yep. Uh, next one we have is from Marie. Hey, Marie. Uh, this is the thing we were talking about last week. Clickbait packaging. I hate that. Always yes. read in. Is that a, about like, was that the fasting bar? No, it was, it was from when we were talking about stuff. On that was so much fun. If you did not see our recent video reviewing and we gave it an honest review. I did want to mention the something intermittent that. fasting bar. So we got a bunch of people going, did you test your glucose on it? No. The reason, and we were both wearing CGMs, the reason we didn't test our glucose on it, because it was gross. Well, the first bite you saw in the video, it was good. And then it was bitter. And it, and, and it was like, I can't eat this whole bar. I thought about testing my glucose on it, but it was gross. And I'm not going to eat something as much as we love you guys. 
I'm not going to eat something that's gross. If it tastes really good, I'll go, okay, fine, I'll eat the 18 total carbs for the sake of the channel or because I think it's worth it. But if it's gross, I'm not going to eat it. You can't choke it down. I don't want to choke it down. I'm, I don't want to waste the carbohydrates. I am sure that, like we said. But I don't think it would go up. I feel like they're, they're, um, the, the little graphs that they have. Absolutely I think accurate. they're accurate for most people. Absolutely accurate. I don't think but that... But it doesn't mean you're not eating. But that does not mean that food is not taking place. That right. that is That was, to me, the bigger message. Yeah. That, like, food is taking and place. And I don't remember who it was, but during the live chat, somebody said, if a type 1 diabetic ate 18 total carbs and ate this yes, bar, that's their a glucose different story. would probably go to 300, yeah. and they would have to dose with insulin. That in itself says the bar would be doing something. Because water yeah. would not make you dose yourself with insulin. No. Okay? And so that was our whole point. Yeah, the type 1 diabetic thing, that was very, yeah. that's important to know. Cody, thank you very much hey, for Cody. the four ninety nine super chat. Hope you're having Cody. a good week. And then Jackie, thank you very much for the $5 hey, super Jackie. chat. Said only two and a half hours of sleep last night, up five pounds this morning. Get, Get some sleep. sleep. Yes. Right. Thank you for thank you for noting that. Because seriously, we, we don't want to get eyes on that sometimes it's hard it, you know especially like summertime i i have definitely been pushing it a little bit during the summertime why because like summertime and i want to have fun last night i got uh, like i went to bed later than i normally do because my friend of more than 30 years can you believe yeah. like i'm old enough to have a friend for 30 years plus um, her youngest daughter had her 16th birthday yesterday, and it was a beautiful, lavish affair where I got to, we, it was fancy dress up for this party. It was so nice. And, um, but that meant that I got home late. Like, I couldn't even believe I was, like, driving at 9 p.m. last night, right? Usually that's bedtime for me. So, um, in the summer, be careful because sometimes you can creep up and, like, Watch those summer movies and stay up late, and it does affect things. Let's take a quick fade to black. Yay! Okay, we're back. so I was hoping my friend Chris would be in here, not just because, not just because he's my friend, but Chris be, Bear. Be, yes, but because he'd get a kick out of this. Chris, we all say, is a nerd. This is nerdtastic, and I have a lot of nerd friends, and another one of my nerd friends sent us. An amazing present. Let me read the card very okay. quickly. Can you hand it to me like under the table? Yes, I can. Because it's really funny. We're not doing anything. Well, Lynette's here. All right. Pass this message on to Chris Berry. He'll get a kick out of this, Lynette. Okay. So, dear Joe and Rachel, you both continue to inspire the community and change lives uh, with your every appearance, both on stage and online. I love you. It's uh, been such a delight watching you, your real-time experiments and likewise transformation. In recognition of your invaluable backing of both the Citizen Science Foundation and Own Your Labs, we were eager to send you a special gift. Rather than investing in conventional advertising methods, we genuinely appreciate the word of mouth promotion from you, our cherished advocates, such as yourself. We hope you find joy in this intricately crafted, crafted, crocheted lipoprotein lovingly made by Dave's mother. Look at this. This is so awesome. She actually knitted. She crocheted. A lipo protein. How freaking cute is this? This is awesome. And it says, read it says that. lipo protein made by Dave Feldman's mom. Doesn't even, she doesn't even get a name. This is like in school when you're like, you're Caleb's mom. Like my name is not Rachel. This I'm Caleb's awesome. mom. This is awesome. I absolutely this love this. is the greatest thing. As a matter of fact, thing. when it came, it came with, the, it had this like, this was like just tied on. Yeah. And I told Rachel, I want it permanently attached. How stinking I love this. Cute. Thank you so much, Thank Dave, you, Dave, and everybody Feldman. at Own Your Labs. Thank you to Dave's mom. I don't know Dave's mom's name. No one um, will know. But again, if you don't know, so if you don't know who Dave Feldman is, Dave Feldman, like he is pioneering. Yes. Like the research on cholesterol. cholesterol. People are always like, oh if my gosh, concerned. my cholesterol. If you're concerned, you need to go over to cholesterolcode.com yes. and look at his research. And he has with the citizen science because, listen, doctors don't want to bother researching it. So here is an engineer who 
basically said like, hey, I don't understand what's going on. And like the studies he's doing is Loves amazing. Data. And if you want to help, if you do things like get blood work, you can go, go to own, own your, your labs. labs. We make no money off no. of this. This is about pa- furthering the research that Dave does. We are paid completely With in crocheted lipoproteins. lipoproteins. Yeah. That is what we So earn. we have a link down below for Own Your Labs. That link will put in some of the tests that we like, but you don't have to use those. It will give you a discount, and you can use a code 2 Crazy Ketos for a bigger discount. Again, we make no money. But if you want to get your labs done on your own, not go through your doctor, not have to bother telling your doctor, hey, I need an A1C test. You go through Own Your Labs, it's ridiculously cheap. You get an A1C test for like five bucks. Yeah. Uh, you can get your cholesterol, you can get all of that stuff checked. You sign up, and then you basically just go to a lab corp. They pull your blood, and two days later, you've got all your results that you can look at it, and then you can compare it to Dr. Barry and Kim Howerton's book for um, Common Sense Labs. So you can get that book will even tell you what labs to get. And when you go to Own Your Labs, you can agree to participate in the citizen science uh, in the citizen science foundation by allowing them to use your results anonymously to further their research. So, right. like again, things like why is Joe and Rachel have really high cholesterol but have really good heart health? Like if you look at every market, if you look at our total cholesterol, most people are going to be like, "You're going to die." But then look at, like, our VLDL is, like, zero or one. Look at our triglycerides. They're, like, in the 40s. You look at our HDL. It's, like, two to three times higher than our triglycerides. Look at our CPA. Everything is perfect except for that total cholesterol. And Dave's research has been, like, that's actually not a bad thing. Yeah. Okay? So, you know, in in some cases that he has seen. You know, right. I don't want to. I don't want to hurt his thing. Well, and I think that um, it it's may Im- not be a bad thing. It's important for us to support the Citizen Science Foundation. Explaining why is it high? Right, and because he is that. That's how all of his research is funded. He's not backed by Coca Cola. Right. He's not packed by Big Pharma. You can imagine that they're not super excited about and then the he research goes to he's conferences doing. For free. Yeah. To help us learn more. Exactly. So I think he isn't Dave is going to be in Orlando. Um. I believe Dave yes. is going to be in Orlando. I believe he's going to be in Orlando. So we'll wait. Yeah. So, okay. Actually, this weekend we're going to be at the Antithetic Baltimore Conference in Columbia, Maryland. It's not too late if you live in the Capital Beltway area to come out for that. We're going to be emceeing that event, and there's going to be a lot of great speakers. So don't miss out if you if you live in that area. Uh, next one is from Dudley Dura. How cute is that? It'll be one year on Keto War. A July 12th, I lost 70 pounds by January 2023, and my wife lost 60 pounds in that first six months. Now, in the second six months, we have been up and down in the same five or six pounds range. Six-month major stall. We haven't ever counted macros. We just eat and don't eat carbs. We both find it easy to stick to the right foods. Maybe some additives like MCT. Any suggestions? Okay, so again, you got to look at we, I want to talk a little bit about today's topic, and we got another comment about it later on. People don't understand, like, why am I losing weight? Why am I not losing weight? Why am I gaining weight on keto? Keto is a health optimization lifestyle. Weight loss is just a side effect. Right. Okay? But you could also gain weight on keto because it is a health optimization diet you could end up putting on a bunch of muscle. If you're eating mostly meat, most likely you're going to gain bone density. You're going to gain muscle. Well, that weighs something. That's why you need to throw the scale out and at least not focus on the scale because if you see the scale going up but you're not getting closed tighter, then something else is going on. Like we said earlier, though, a lot of times we come to keto with this calorie restriction mentality. I did. Rachel did. Certainly. And so what happens is is you look at, well, I can't eat that many macros because according to this silly calculator, which doesn't know you, um, I'm only allowed to eat 1,500 calories a day. And so you eat there and you lose weight. But now your body's metabolism is going to be like, okay, 
I am going to learn to function on 1500 calories because your body wants to always be in homeostasis. It wants to burn what it brings in. No more, no less. So if you eat a way extra, a lot of times we begin fidgeting, especially if you eat like sugar. You ever notice people who eat a lot of sugar, they start fidgeting, yeah. right? Um, Caleb, when he was little, he was in sit here. Still. He couldn't sit still. Doctors would tell us, this. teachers would tell us he needs it's, to be on Ritalin. Yeah. Um, it was the sugar, but you would go to the grocery store and he is like making hand movements. What was he doing? He was trying to get rid of the excess energy that he was eating in sugar. That's what your body does. If it can't get rid of it, like you just refuse to get up off the couch, then it's going to just store it as fat. Okay. So your body wants to live in homeostasis. So if you're taking in too much food, it'll try to get rid of it and then it will store it. If you're not taking in enough, slowly it'll lose weight and then it'll be like, well, I don't know how long I'm going to have to be here, so I'm going to slow things down. I'm not going to grow hair as fast. I'm not going to burn fat as fast because I need to preserve that for later. So now your metabolism slows down and now you're stuck in a weight loss stall. How do you get out of the weight loss store? Lower it more so that your body can do that or... You do a reverse diet where you eat higher. And what happens is, is we're all afraid to do a reverse diet. Absolutely. Because you've got to be patient enough to slowly increase your calories to a place where you can start to lower it again. But it is hard. It is a hard process. It is a lot of, of work and patience. It is patience on that. Like yeah. it, it, it's challenging to do that. So here's what I'm, I was going to just say. If you, you say you haven't counted macros and just don't eat carbs. What I would tell you is for one week, count macros. Not, don't count macros. Log every yeah. single thing that you're putting in your mouth. Every single thing. Log it. Then at the end of that week, see look and see at. where you're at. How much are you eating? Are you eating over 16 to 1800 calories. If you are, maybe lower it 100. If you're not, if you're right at that 15 to 1700 calories, what you need to do is reverse diet. You need to get yourself back up to somewhere around 2400 calories and stay there for about two to three weeks and then reverse your way back down only take 100. Like 15 to 1700 should be your bare minimum. Nobody should be eating less than that. 1600 is like my basal metabolic rate. Right. Like that is like. And you should do never not eat below your basal metabolic rate. Right. Basal metabolic rate is what your body needs to if, to never get out Just of bed. Just lay What does it in need bed, to never get it? Not even go to the bathroom. That's right. what your body needs. You should never eat below that. So if you're eating between 15 to 1700 calories, it's time to do a reverse diet. Do not lower it more. Because I know. Also like, look at carb creep. It's very, it's very challenging to see like, man, I'm only eating 1300 calories. Why can I lose no, you know, why can't I lose your any body's weight? In starvation because now. your body is like, well, I guess this is where we live. And I don't want to let go of anything yeah. because 1300 calories is all I get. Like yep. all I have, I need you know, I need 1,600 to just lay in the bed and this woman is only giving me 1,300. Or in my case, at, for a long time, I was only giving it 500. And so. then what we do is we start going, okay, I'm only allowed to have 1,300. How do I eat a lot of food in that 1,300 calories? We eat a whole bunch of protein and we don't eat any fat. So right. we start eating like, Chicken I'm going to eat 140 grams of protein, but I'm only going to eat 50 or 60 grams of fat. That will make it worse. Because your body is going to do two things. Number one, it doesn't want to use that fat. It doesn't want to burn that fat because that's its primary source of fuel if you're not eating carbohydrates. So you're not going to lose any more fat. You're barely giving it enough fuel. And then it's going to start using the protein for glucose because it doesn't want to use the fat. Now, Again, gluconeogenesis, our body, it's not that you're giving it a lot of extra protein so your body is going to use that and turn it into sugar. It doesn't work that way. It's demand-driven, not supply-driven. But when you're eating really high protein and very low fat with zero carbohydrates or less than 20 carbohydrates, you're creating the you're demand You're now situation. creating the demand for, for glucose because you're not giving it enough fat. Right. You have to be eating a minimum of one gram of fat to one gram of protein and probably closer to two just to be able to have some kind of weight loss.
Uh, next one is from Janelle. Hi, Janelle. Maybe I'm being hormonal, but it makes me want to cry a little. I was thinking about everyone that is starting this diet. They join the community and everyone welcomes them. It made me think of the scripture of being surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Everyone here has a story of healing, whether they've been on the diet for two weeks, two months, or two years. For so many, the healing is not just in the body, but in the heart and mind as well. We can give the supporting encouragement because we've seen the evidence of what is possible. I'm grateful to be a part of this community, thankful to God for leading me to this way of eating and for the continued strength to keep going. I love that. Wow, Janelle, thank you. I, I, I don't think that I could say that any better. That like That is just such a precious thing. And that's how we feel every single day. What a blessing to be surrounded by people who are also making hard choices every day to be healthy. Like, you know, that, that feels very rewarding in itself, that there is just victory going on all around us. When I look in our Facebook feed or I look in the mighty networks and I see pictures of people on hikes, on dates, like going play camping, they're doing something with their precious grandchildren or their children, you know, like just, it's so encouraging because you're, we're just surrounded by victory. And that makes me be more successful in making the right choices. I want to continue having, you know, personal victories as well. Oh, Susan said Dave's going to be in Omaha. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I actually, I actually wrote it down as soon as she said it and then didn't share it. Yeah, we'll so be sorry in about Omaha that. in a couple weeks. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Audrey. Hi, Audrey. Uh, has anyone used the ice cream attachment with the KitchenAid mixer to make keto chow ice cream? We have. Yeah. Um, and I put this in because, of course, we had the ice cream diet video, which was just... It was the ice cream diet video was a fun way. Yeah. When the when the keto chow box came, we came back from Orlando. I'm like, let's what, what can we do, do with different? This? Be and different. So we said, let's do ice cream. We did ice cream years ago where we Rachel omatted three keto chow ice creams in the bathtub. Well, and I just want to put out there, you can make ice cream. In all kinds of different ways. Well, that's ways. what they're asking. So you can make it in a Vitamix. Yep. We have a video on that. Or a really powerful blender of some sort. Um, you can make it with any ice cream maker. So you can buy the Cuisinart one where you take it's the, like bowl, the bowl, you put it in the freezer. You can use the KitchenAid attachment. We had that. We, we used it for a long time. The reason we stopped using that is because there's two of us and you're going to get one serving of ice cream. And then you have to refreeze the bowl. And that means the other person is out of luck. Right. Um, so we sold that. Uh, or you can use a compressor ice cream maker. How do you make ice cream from keto chow? In those, you take your keto chow and you pour it into the ice cream maker and you turn it on. So right. if you have the frozen bowl one, you obviously have to freeze the bowl, but you pour it in there and you turn it on. Keto chow ice cream is always going to be best when you use a minimum of three tablespoons of melted butter or three tables, three ounces of heavy whipping cream. And honestly, when it comes to melted butter, it doesn't work as well in anything other than the creamy. We've done it, but a lot of times you it get gets the, like a waxy feeling on the roof the of butter. your mouth when you use ice cream makers. I don't know why, but it is different than when you do it in the creamy. But you need a fat source. Otherwise, it doesn't come out right. Even it's with ice the creamy. Milk. I mean... It's a little bit better with the creamy, but still, it's not super creamy unless you use enough fat. Ice cream is supposed to be fatty. Right. It just is. To enjoy it the most. But I just want everybody to know, we share our lives and what we are doing and what is the authentic appliances that we use. And over the years, it changes. Yep. Because, you know, it's so funny. Um... I think it was Jerry that says that he uses like his, uh, you know, his rec tech is a medical device mm -hmm. and that's us, right? Like write it off. we do not, um, have to buy medications all the time. So we constantly will upgrade appliances in our life that help us enjoy the food that we eat. So we are never trying to insinuate that you need to purchase every single appliance. Nope, we're just showing you what we use. We're just authentically showing you what you use. So what you it's not have- not like I make money off of you buying a Ninja Cream. Exactly. In your home- is for you. And we celebrate that. It's not like, eh, it's only good if you use a Ninja Creamy. That's not true nope, because we've, we've had it all I different just think ways. it's the best one. My mother still does it in the blender. Carrie wants to know, would coconut oil work for making ice cream? It will with keto chow if 
you make it the same way as butter. So you have to melt it, you have to warm it up, and you have to use warm water because coconut oil, I forget the exact number, somewhere around 75 degrees uh, is where it's the threshold between solid and liquid. So below 75 degrees, I think it's 75, it's somewhere in the 70s, it becomes a solid. So as soon as you made it cold, it's going to be gross because yeah. it's going to become a solid fat. So you have to emulsify it. The reason that you can use melted butter, melted coconut oil, melted tallow with keto chow is because the gum acacia acts as an emulsifier. It makes it so that when you blend it with a blender, the fat does not become solid again. So that's why it works. That's what made us like keto chow. When we first tried keto chow five years ago, we did a video and said, not for me because too many carbs with heavy whipping cream and too expensive with avocado oil. When Chris discovered you could use butter, butter and we met him in 2019 better. and he goes, hey, I figured out you can use butter. I'm we like, were like, that what? was the game changer for us yeah. because butter is low in carb and cheap. That's why we started liking it. That's pretty much should be like my hashtag. Like I'm low carb and cheap. Nice. Just like that. Next one is from Rita. Hi, Rita. Said, hi, I could use some help. Is there a menu for 30 days or less of beef, butter, bacon, egg? I'm not a great cook, and my husband isn't completely keto. I'm at a loss for meal planning. Thank you. This is an amazing site. Edited. Is this only done for 30 days or less acceptable? Okay. Somebody actually commented earlier, but I did want to say. So, number one, there is no meal plan, really. I mean, you can make one if you want. What can you eat? Beef, beef, butter, butter bacon, bacon, or eggs. And whatever combination and you whatever You don't have cuts. to eat eggs if you don't want, although I would try to because eggs are life. I think it's the best complete source of nutrition you can eat is an egg. Think about it. It brings life. Yeah. Um, you don't have, if you don't chicken. like bacon, you don't have to eat bacon. If you don't eat bacon for religious reasons, you don't have to eat bacon. Um, but beef, bacon, butter, and eggs, that's what you can have. So you can meal plan by going, I'm going to eat steak today and I'm going to eat bacon and eggs tomorrow and I'm going to make ground beef. For us, beef, butter, bacon, and egg, if we're just doing it for ourselves and not for a video, it's a lot of ground beef. It's a right. lot of ground beef and eggs and bacon. Um, steaks once in a while, but I'm lazy. So like ground beef is easy. I take it out of the freezer and I scramble it up and I can meal prep like 10 pounds of it and have it in the freeze in the fridge. But after that, if your husband isn't beef, isn't keto, that's fine. Make a whole bunch of beef. Just tell him, hey, for the next 30 days, I'm only going to eat beef. We're going to eat beef and then give him whatever vegetables he wants. It's designed to be 90 days, but you can do it for less. And if you, I would say, I think it was hoofing it. There it is right here. If beef, butter, or bacon, egg gives you anxiety, hey, commit to 30, 60, or 90 days. Commit to one day at a time. There you go. Then one week at a time. That's what helped her start and keep going. That is great advice. You're going to see best results at a minimum of 30 days. Right. That's where you're going to, best results will be a minimum of 30 days because it takes that long to really get everything out of your system. You know what I think that you should do if you're, you're prepping yourself for like the eggs portion of the menu? You should watch that movie Runaway Bride with Julia Roberts because remember when she's trying to figure out for herself, and this will preach, this is like N equals one. What, how does she like her eggs? Because in the past, she was always like eating her eggs in the style of whoever she was dating. Like she was letting them make the choices for her. And so she goes on this like quest to be like, how do I like my eggs? But she tries all different kinds of eggs. Like, do I like poached eggs? Do I like scrambled eggs? Like, how do I like eggs? So do a, do a, a an ex experiment on like, how do you like your eggs best? Becky said, I've used butter and I still get the waxy feeling and a creamy. If you are getting butter chunks when you make keto chow, there's one of three things that are causing this. A, you didn't melt the butter all the way. Uh, actually, four things. B, um, you didn't use warm enough water. You've got to use water that would sustain butter being melted. So it should be at least 95 degrees. I would say 95 to 110 degrees, That right around that, at 95, somewhere around that. C, you use too hot of water because now it breaks down the protein Isn't that and funny? you get a chunky thing. It's got to be Goldilocks. Or D, you didn't use a blender. So what I do is, what we do is we melt our butter in the microwave, put your hand, run your faucet, put your hand under the faucet, let it go until it's warm. 
once it's warm, use that temperature. If it's if you can't if you put your hand in the faucet Ouch. and it's too hot, it's too hot for you. Blend it. You don't need to blend it too long. You just want to blend it on like a medium for about 10 or 15 seconds. That allows the gumication to emulsify the butter and then put it away. Those are the only reasons that you would have like that waxy feeling. And with the creamy, you really shouldn't get it, but it comes down to making sure you prepare it right the first time. Uh, next one is from Ida. Hi, Ida. Okay, I'm putting myself out there. I followed and listened to all the conferences and decided to put myself out there. No more excuses on mindless eating due to my circumstances. Need consistency and a community. I hear this is one of those groups to get it. I love that. Yeah. That's so awesome. Thanks so much, Ida, for, for joining our group and being a part and putting yourself out there. I know that that's bold. And again, join members.2crazyketos.com. If you're struggling like, hey, I'm just mindlessly eating. I find every time this happens, I go eat. What you do is when that happens, go jump in our group. There's always You can go in there at 3 o'clock in the morning. Somebody's in the instant messenger chat. That's yeah. why we like it. Next one's from Katie. Hi, Katie. Boy, were my excuses working overtime this morning. I've been taking back my life since February. February 22nd of this year. Last night, out of nowhere, I had the urge to binge eat. Could not sleep. I hurt all over. I did binge eat ground beef, keto chow pudding, and turkey salad. I call it binging because I was not hungry. I tried journaling. I could not figure out why I was feeling like my old self. After binge eating, at least it was keto-friendly food and not my husband's stash of Reese's Cups, even though they were calling my name. And watching Finding Nemo, Disney is my go-to comfort shows. I was able to sleep a little. When I talked to my husband this morning, he said it's like quitting smoking. It just pops up from time to time. For some reason, this made me feel better. First of all, I want to say congratulations for not binging on the Reese's. Yeah, and that's at huge. At least binging on keto food. And sometimes... Our emotions just get the better of us and we binge eat. But the fact that you were able to realize at least that you are binging and that you weren't hungry, I think is a step in the right direction. I do too. There was like a long time where I would just not point it out to myself. It was just happening, this behavior, and I wasn't calling it out like it was. Like, Rachel, you are not actually hungry and you're just eating a bunch of food right now. Like, why are you doing that? And the fact that you're having a conversation with yourself and trying to authentically find out why am I still having a problem with this? I think is really important. And I love that you have discovered that Finding Nemo also provides you comfort. Disney movies also give you comfort. So it's nice that like, okay, well, maybe next time if if you are in need of comfort and something springs up, maybe reach for the Disney movie first and see like, how does that help? Yeah, and again, as we were just saying, when you're having those times, go jump into our a Mighty Network group, members.2crazyketos.com, because there's always somebody in there that you can kind of talk to. Uh, next one we have is from Tanya. Hey, Tanya. Tanya said, I've started moving, exercising again, and it feels Yay. great. Four weeks in, there has been serious physical adjustment as my body has awakened to this kind of movement again, but the old bod is hanging tough and getting Strong. Tanya, I am so stinking proud of you. And I I love your acknowledgement that like this is hard. It feels weird getting started again means getting momentum moving again. It's yeah. got to be like in my body, in my attitude, in my schedule. There's a lot of factors yeah. that get us actually exercising, but I'm so proud of you for moving forward. Uh, next one is from Becca. Hey, Becca. Okay, this worries me. I know I'm severely underweight, but when I look at myself in a mirror after a shower, I was horrified. I seem to be exhibiting all the symptoms of kawash your core, extremely emaciated arms, legs, and body, but a round belly and swollen feet. This baffles me since I'm mostly carnivore and keto chow. On low protein days, I eat around 60 grams of protein. On higher days, 80 to 90 grams. It's hard for me to eat more since I, if I do my blood ketones drop and I need to keep them high for mental health reasons. I also tend to keep my fats two to one fat to protein for the most part or pretty close. Can anyone help with this? Okay, Becca, and this is going to go for a lot of people. As we saw, the title of today's Keto Beyond the Couch is gaining weight on keto. And that applies both ways. We've already talked about what if you are gaining weight and you don't want to, like checking out like what our macros are or not macros, but how much are we eating? Are we under eating? Are we overeating? Those kind of things. Are we eating the right foods? But 
again, keto is a health optimization diet, but we still have to eat the proper foods and the proper amounts of food. And you can gain weight on keto intentionally. And the way you do that is by increasing the amount of fuel you eat, fat. So again, we are not doctors, nurses, or health professionals, but we've done a lot of research on this. We've experimented ourselves, and we have a lot of friends who are doctors or nurses or health professionals in the keto world. And some of the things, that, first of all, 60 grams of protein is not enough. That's bottom line. Honestly, 80 grams of protein is not enough. You should be eating a minimum of 100 grams of protein a day. Everybody should be eating a minimum of 100 grams of protein a day. If you're getting emaciated, you're losing, aside from fat, you're losing muscle mass. That's not a good thing. As Dr. Boz actually pointed out in that little short she had, as you lose muscle mass, you lose longevity. What does that mean? If you lose your muscle mass, you're going to die earlier. Wow. I hate to say that, and that applies to everyone. That's what happens when we severely calorie restrict. When we severely calorie restrict, yeah, we lose fat, but we also lose muscle. And as you lose muscle, and that's one of the problems with this way that people have decided to start losing weight, taking a medication in mega doses that was designed to help with diabetes, but using it to lose weight, and they're losing massive amounts of muscle, and that's going to put us in an earlier grave, according to a lot of doctors. You may lose the weight, but how long are you going to be healthy and live? So you need to eat more protein because protein builds muscle. Protein helps with bone density. That helps you be stronger. So you need to eat your protein. I understand you need to have higher ketone. Me meat. too. How do you get that? You increase the amount of fat that you are eating. Yeah. You don't under eat. You increase the amount of fat and you eat the appropriate fats. Protein and fat is not like on a lever, like in order to like get that ratio, I lower my protein. That's not how it works. Like a seesaw. Eat a minimum of 100 grams of protein and then increase fat from there. If you're trying to gain weight, the only way you're going to gain weight is to eat more fuel. That is it. It's, but you need to have the protein because it's a building block. It helps with lipids, but you need to also eat a lot more fuel. If you are doing keto for mental health reasons, you should be eating closer to three to one or even four to one That's where I'm fat at. to protein. Yeah. You should be eating a lot more. So if you're eating 100 grams of protein, you should be eating three or 400 grams of fat. You will gain weight. You just got to find where is it that you'll start putting that weight on, but you, you will end up gaining weight if you eat more fat than your body needs, but you also have to have that protein with it. So, and it's not that hard to overeat fat. I mean, it's just, we think it, one of the reasons it's that you small, can gain weight on right. keto is because we start doing a lot of bars and stuff and go, well, the, that's where the net carb thing comes a problem. Oh, it's only, you know, one net carb. Now it's 15 total but carbs, but we count fat. net carb, but then it's high in fat. And then you have someone who's trying to lose weight. The next thing you know, they ate an extra 80 to 90 grams of fat in the day from eating two bars. So that's where that could be a problem. So increase your fat and then look at your fat types. You want things like MCT oil, things that help with ketones. Remember, it's not the blood ketones that matter. It's that your body is using ketones. You can get a 5.0 on blood ketones, but not actually use them. Like I said, drink alcohol. That, But blood ketones are simply ketones that your body is not currently using. They're excess ketones. You want to just always be fu functioning off of fat for the most part. But your body does need glucose. So increase the fat, bring that protein up, and like double the amount of fat you're eating. And that will help you to gain weight. Uh, we have one more. It is from Denise. <laughs> Denise, pulling a Rachel. Yes, you are, Denise. Oh my goodness, I love this so much. I do love my whipped cream. You I do. am not going to lie. In you fact, missed it last week because it was buy one, get one free. Yes, buy one, get one free at Publix, the, the whipped cream that we enjoy. 
And even last night, I, I enjoyed some on top of our keto chow creamy with, with the bacon bits. I do love my whipped cream. And thank you for letting me know that I am not alone in my love for this. We have gotten messages from people like, that's not sugar-free. The, the, the purple can of Ready Whip that we use is sugar-free. And the, you can make it in your home. Yes, you can. You can get a whipped cream dispenser. We have done that. We, we do that a lot of times when it's not on sale. But when it is on sale, buy it's one, you get one free. It is literally it. cheaper for me to buy the can than it is to make it on my own because heavy cream is expensive. And then I got to buy the little cartridges for my whipped cream dispenser. And I certainly don't want to have to sit here with a blender and whip it up. It's just cheaper and faster to do that. But again, if it's not buy one, get one free, probably not worth it because it's like $6 a can. Yeah. True. Well, that is going to be the end of today's Keto Beyond the Couch. Sorry about the little hiccup where we had to switch from going live. Um, lately, they've been doing a lot of construction work in our community. And Kinda Comcast knocks us out. keeps going down. And, you know, it looked like everything was going great. And then all of a sudden, you never know when it's going to happen. But you know what? We pivot. We will we'll handle it and we don't give up. That's the biggest thing. So that's the message going forward. If you're seeing this on the replay, don't give up this week, keep going. Yes, there will be obstacles. Yes, there will be frustrations, but you can do it. You don't have to give up. Now, barring any internet problems, we will be back on live on Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. We love you guys. Bye.